I just read a poem and do a first reading. Um, I have something I haven't read before. I'm a poet I might or might not know. I try not to pick poets I know well at all. I might have just heard their name. And don't read it like a like a professor, you know, who's spent time with a poem, run it through literary theory, and fit it into a tradition. Just read it. Literally just read and see what's there. That joy of a first reading of something. So this one was on the Poetry Foundation page, and I picked it mostly because of the title. Um, I don't know the poet, I swear. I see skulls coming. The title is so vivid, I thought, well, let's give it a chance. I always look at the form of a poem before I actually read through it. So this one I look, and there's a quatrain, 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 and then we end up with a couplet at the end. Look at the lines. Um, I don't see a rhyme scheme jumping out at me. Um, also... The lines are similar, but they're not the same um, syllable count, so I'm not looking for consistent meter here, even if it ends up being in a fairly standard English um, iambic or something. So let's just look at this one. I swear I see skulls coming by Mukoma Wa Ngugi. And I'm sorry, Mukoma, if I have just butchered the pronunciation of your name. <clears throat> it's strange artwork. Perhaps we do this strange artwork automatically throws me back to Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit, although that might have nothing to do with it. Sometimes as a first reading, what comes to me is not necessarily what's in the poem, and I have to look at the poem to see what's there. Strange artwork, perhaps voodoo. A human skull strung in perfect symmetry to a tree in Mount Kenya Forest. It's grinning away, a soul bullet hole now jagged. Wow, it's a heck of an image to start with. It's a skull strung to a tree, perhaps it's voodoo that is strung to the tree. It's perfect symmetry of the size of the skull, I'm assuming. Perhaps it against the tree as well. Um, it's in a forest. It's not quite where you typically expect to see it. It's, uh, it's an art piece of art or voodoo. It's grinning away. So this, it's grinning here as a skull in death, grinning even though it's not. So a bullet hole is now jagged. So it's, it's either you know time has, has worn away the bullet hole. It certainly adds a twist to the Aeolian harp, doesn't it? There's a throwback to, I feel like, romantic, I feel like this is classically British romantic um, poetry where you have the Aeolian harp, you know, coming in as a symbol. Um, so I feel like it's throwing this in there too. You know, like there's Aeolian harp that sits there and sounds with the wind. Now we have a, a human skull sounding with the wind. And also added into poetry. It's not something you necessarily see in a poetic piece, typically. Art is inspired in many ways. Yes, yes, it is. And here it's a hard way. It feels like here it's death whistling in the wind. Literally the skull whistling after death in the wind. That's a nice image. Probe. I don't know what probe means. Like probing, probing the skull, probing the situation. Measurements, not racist, but racialist. Could have been a white tourist or black native. We don't really know who it is. It must have held a sizable brain, not mind. Very clearly focused on the physical, like the size of the brain, not the mind. The mind and the brain are different. And we wouldn't know from looking at the skull whether it was a white tourist or a black native. We Who knows? Um, not mind. Philosophy is not in bone or DNA. This is that distinction that we all feel between our body and what we believe. Let's call it a colonial relic. Now that brings in a lot of things to play with here, right? Especially Kenya, the colonial history of it. And perhaps this is a colonial piece. Who knows? Facts known. Facts known to unknown. Is that what's going to come next, the facts known to unknown? Or is that the colonial past to the present, to the present violence? Rwanda manufactures 400,000 skulls a year. Yeah, that's, that's so hard, man. It's calling, like, the death that's happening in Rwanda, 400,000 skulls, like, manufacturing them, like, killing. See the movement here? Yes playing on manufacturing. It's a kind of colonial and western movement it feels like that's happened. Death, art, science, social history. Perfect dialectic. 
Nairobi National Archives, a modern building. It's a very clear shift here, right? That's from the forest to the colonial setting um, to the present. Nairobi National Archives, a modern building with feet sinking in slum. Wow, that's a heck of an image, this building with its feet in the sinking in the slum. Skulls of a colonial relic on display. What a shift, right? Is this the forest? Is this a display case in the archives? Or is this a separate skull? It's clean. What's clean? The archives or the skull? I'm assuming it's the skull that's clean. I swear that thing whistles at night. Winds in the middle passage. So we have the whistling of the skull. Earlier on, now we have the middle passage brought up. The middle passage across the Atlantic, I'm assuming. We're talking about, um, in that case, the curator says, I don't know how much the middle passage counted in terms of numbers of people from Kenya. That would have been a way longer voyage than it would have been from somewhere like Nigeria or the Ivory Coast or something. So I'm curious. I'll have to look up the history of colonial slavery in the region. It's a kind of fascinating take on things. The curator says, the curator says this, right? Here I must come clean. Clean, we have the skull clean earlier, the whistling of the skull. Is this a play on the poet whistling, like literally the song, the poem is a whistle. And the poet is coming clean with this weight of history, the weight of the art piece, which is the skull in the forest. The poet cannot speak of the unknown. But I walk outside to see a whole country walking with guns held to their heads. Wow, that's... Whoa. That's a hell of an image at the end, that make like we build up to that one. And we have the known and unknown earlier, the movement, right? The movement from known to unknown. So in this poem, we're moving from known to unknown in little ways from the art piece skull in the beginning to this end. I walk outside to see a whole country walking with guns held to their head. This is the violence of the colonial past. This is the violence of the present. present. The violence the people are doing against each other. Um, I don't know. This is a very powerful, very powerful poem. Um, definitely makes me want to read more of uh, his work to see um, how this fits in other pieces. I swear I see skulls coming. That line plays differently once you've seen to the end of the poem, like skulls, like the people walking in the street are skulls coming. Um, being manufactured in this kind of colonial past, present. Very interesting. <laughs>